one reason we don't like change is we get comfortable where we are. We get used to our friends, our job, the place we live, and even if it's not perfect, we accept it because it's familiar. And what happens is because we're not willing to change, we get stuck in what God used to do instead of moving forward into what God is about to do. And just because God's blessed you where you are doesn't mean you can just sit back and settle there. You have to stay open to what God is doing now. What worked five years ago may not work today. If you're going to be successful, you have to be willing to change. Every blessing is not supposed to be permanent. Every provision is not supposed to last forever. We should constantly evaluate our friendships. Who's speaking into your life? Who are you depending on? Make sure they're not dragging you down, limiting you from blossoming. Everybody is not supposed to be in our life forever. If you don't get rid of the wrong friends, you will never meet the right friends. So let's talk about what life is. You know, Buckminster Fuller said that life is anti-entropic. See, in the universe, you have the second law of thermodynamics. You have entropy everywhere. Entropy is breaking everything into its simpler constituents. Entropy is the playing out of process, breaking things down. But then you have this thing called life. In this Goldilocks zone, this phenomenon of life, life emerges, it self-organizes. It's almost like life resides in a part of the universe that is self-organizing towards complexity. It's complexity that bootstraps on its own complexity. Single-celled organisms emerge in the biochemistry of a planet like the Earth that lives in the Goldilocks zone. And these single-celled organisms clump together into multicellular organisms. These multicellular organisms eventually become primates. These primates then get caught in self-awareness. They start to self-perceive. Then these primates start to imagine future possibilities. They start planning. A mind emerges. A feral mind turns into a tool, as Kevin Kelly says, that can then think with purpose and deliberation. Then we spill over the creations of our minds into tools, and then we engage in feedback loops with those tools to further extend our creative possibilities. It's fascinating because it seems there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a process of sort of a self-organization of emergence that's happening here. It's like these things are coming together and they're creating transcendent effects. They're exhibiting transcendent effects. You know, minds, brains, these things seem to be greater than the sum of their parts. It's when you have higher level order from lower level organization. This this emergence. You know, when birds enter swarms, there's no leader. There's nobody telling all the other birds how to get into these formations, but it seems to be self-organizing. And we know that we are made of atoms. Those atoms turn into, clump together into cells. The cells clump together into organs, and those organs clump together into us. And then we create tools, and we wire each other mind to mind communication. We create a Gaia global brain. This global brain itself, part of the, the biological global grid nervous system of nature. And those two things breathing, thinking, the thinking stratum of the universe, the universe wakes up.